agree on the timetable. What about the rest of the Middle East? You mentioned Israel. Do we continue to support Israel? You know, Israel is the one democracy in the Middle East, uh, and it has been an ally, and yes, we continue to support them. Uh, and, uh, and not only do we continue to support them, but we do something that we haven't as a country done in many years, which is what we did during the Clinton administration, which is to use our influence to bring the parties to the table to try to reach a just and equitable solution uh, to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And we need to do this because, you know, with respect to the Middle East, American families are hanging on by their fingernails right now while we spend 13 billion dollars and our attention and our government's attention over there. It is time for us to refocus at home and start addressing energy, start addressing health care, stop going. Chris Shays has been to Iraq 22 times. This district needs a congressperson who is going to focus on the challenges and the issues that the people of this district are okay. facing and so we need to Listen, reorient I... ourselves to the challenges that our families face. Okay, I don't know what he just said. He talked Beautifully the question and says, Israel. No, I understand the question. It's just he mm -hmm. talks a lot and says absolutely nothing. We need to take a tough love stand with Israel. We already know the reason why we had 9-11. Osama bin Laden was clear in our 9-11 commission report. One of the bombers was very clear about why we were there. We are the problem here. We, we support the settlements. Condoleezza Rice was just there, exasperated. The settlements, 150 settlements now, no change. They keep growing. We've got hedge funds here financing settlements. We've got wealthy Americans financing settlements. Four U.S. presidents condemn the settlements, and yet they still happen. We are hated worldwide because of our blind support amid what's happening there. We need to take a tough love stand with Israel and, and demand that there's a resolution and that the settlements and buildings stop. Tom, if I could just note, to imply, as Ms. Whitnam has, that the Israelis are directly or indirectly responsible for 9-11 is nothing shy of abominable uh, and just indicates the extent to which she's not paying attention Tom, to what is I'm really going I'm paying a lot on. of attention. Let me tell you something. Since the Second Intifada began on September 2000, when Ariel Shirell walked into a mosque to get himself elected, creating a riot, so much bloodshed, and eight times as many Arabs as Israelis have been killed, but that's not the point. The majority of the people in the Middle East, 60% of the population is younger than 30 years old, and they have come of age during this time period, Intifada, which is still going on, it's eight years. The danger of it is this, they are seething, shooting, getting rid of Osama bin Laden at the top, if you don't get rid of the reasons why people hate us, solves absolutely nothing. Jim talks like that because Jim was just in, in Israel on a two-day, 48-hour propaganda building trip. He went there from Greenwich, put his arms around Omer, what was that all about, Jim? Was that to get your funding? You, did you have to sign any documents to the APAC, to APAC here? I didn't, sign a, I, I didn't sign a single document. I didn't take a dime. I went there because Israel is on the sharp point of the spear that was very important mm -hmm. to us, which is how we deal with Islamic extremism. And I felt an obligation to go there and actually talk to people. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you this, is really, let's let him this is really... This is really, this election uh, is not about these issues. This election is about energy policy, it is about health care, it is about reasserting our leadership economically so that we have jobs and so that we lead this world once again on things like alternative energy and so that we have a health care system that we can be proud I'm of. I don't changing the topic, Jim. I want to talk about that again. How did you get, you didn't answer the question, how do you go from Greenwich, Connecticut to having your arms around Prime Minister Omer? Nobody leaves and goes to talk to Israel for 48 hours during a campaign. Campaign. Why did you go? Who was the go-between? I, I think I explained that. I set this trip up no, and me, it was there to, explain, to talk to Tom, people who are Tom, expert on these let, issues. Let, let me, we only have five minutes left and there are so many important issues here. This is and the most one of the ones that relates to this, this whole... Because he came back saying... E excuse me, Tom, I really want to, Tom, I want to move this on. Tom, he came back now. and said if, Isra if, He's if answered your question attacked twice, Israel, exactly. if Iran attacked Israel, that the response would be... You're not going to set the agenda any further. I'm sorry. We have to stop now and I have to move on. Would be severe. How dare you wait for without... Recently, Jim Himes returned from a 48-hour Pledge of Allegiance trip to Israel. Immediately, he talked about attacking Iran instead of listening to our own national intelligence estimate, which stated that Iran no longer has a nuclear weapons program. Democrats, your vote for me on August 12 sends a powerful message to Washington. We can break the stranglehold of AIPAC, the Israel lobby, on our politicians. Our country can't afford another unnecessary special interest group war. I'm Lee Whitnam, and I approve this message.
change my closing statement a little tiny bit in response. You know, I'm appalled that when I talk about the neoconservatives, somehow it's twisted to be some sort of a racist comment. This is documented fact. The neoconservative role in the taking down of Iraq, unnecessary war, is fact. It's not opinion. I'm dealing with whore here who sells his soul to APAC, who will say anything for the job. Ignorant. He has the, his response to what I say was just shocking. I'm speaking documented fact, and I think a zealot. I have a plan. I have a. Uh, what I'd like to propose is a um, prosecution of settlers here, American settlers, who go to Israel and maim or kill in the Promised Land. Since 2000, 66,000 of the indigenous culture have been killed, many of them by American settlers. This is viewed all over the Middle East, and we are hated for this worldwide. By prosecuting people here who kill overseas, we would solve anti-American sentiment worldwide. Right, this is I've the number one deal. reason why people hate this country. If you don't nip terrorism in the bud, and the reason why, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, you're not your, your time anything. is up. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Murphy. You know, I had uh, advocated for all the candidates to be a part of these debates. I might think twice about that with that kind of awful language being used on the airwaves. How